Crude oil is declining for the seventh day in a row, marking its longest run of decline since December 2009. The key economic data point to watch today will be the weekly jobless claims number. I'm Taylor Schrantz, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning. I'm Scott Rutherford, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Lindsay Bell with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. The market seems to be trying to muster an oversold bounce this morning, but, you know, the... the the concerns out of Europe and Spain remain. We heard from China that the, the surplus is, um, that they have an oversold surplus there. And jobless claims are going to come out today from the U.S. Right. So we have a lot to swallow. But after six down days in the Dow and a 5% move off the highs, there are some traders trying to play for an oversold balance. And for me, I'm in that camp. I, I am coming in the day uh, net long and you better believe last night I was checking the headlines I was looking to see where the futures are and almost didn't feel worth it trying to be cute and play for a long considering all the problems that we've been seeing you know coming out overseas you know the headlines that are out of Greece I think the more concerning ones are obviously Spain but if you look at the chart here of the SPX you will see that we've been trying to hold this lower area we've been trying to hold this 1345 area you know, the time to sell the market was probably around this 1390, 1392 when it broke that upper support. And, and down here, it's trying to find some buyers. So the question is, you know, we've been buying it down here for bounces. Can we recross or just say trade above this little mini uh, downtrend to get an oversold bounce that everyone's talking about reshorting, which would be back around 1375 to 1380. So I think if you're a bull and you're a trader, all you're looking for is for a move from here to about here. And unfortunately, the risk not, might not be worth it there. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Europe. It's been a concern for a while now. But last night we got earnings from Cisco. And, you know, the guidance was pretty conservative. Management saying that people are delaying tech purchases. So it's kind of taking a hit at our economy. Yeah, well, everyone's been hanging their hat that our economy is, you know, decoupling, that we're not going to be impacted by Europe. But looking at Cisco, all right, you, you, you think that it's not, the, it's not the truth because you see orders slowing in Europe. So obviously, if they're putting austerity, they're not going to have the funding to order. They also said they're seeing some orders slowing in from the public sector, which is what we've been saying here. We want less government, you know, more private business. But with that, you know, you do get a slowdown in some earnings. And right now, Cisco, you know, is down pretty considerably because they're getting impacted. So you have to do some homework and see what other type of companies it could impact because it doesn't impact everyone. But for now, it just goes to show you that we're not immune. So you have to be a bit careful. You have to have more stock selection type strategies and also some tactical strategies based on your time frame. And do you think that this oversold bounce is really going to hold today? I mean, the last few days we saw the market go down early in the morning and then be able to bounce back. And so if we're starting in kind of an, a positive territory, what do you think could happen? Well, what's interesting is if you wanted to be short, the last two days you came in, we were down eight, nine handles. And anyone who tried to get short into the gap down mm -hmm. lost money. The, so the gap down was a better buy. And as a trader, you know, we had those pivot points both days in off the charts. And here we talked about those pivots, which were the prior day's low. And every time we went back above that prior day low, it was great for cash flow for a trader. So today we come in, we're up seven handles. So it's going to be a little complicated for guys who are not long anything to probably play this bounce. Because if you go back to the chart of the S&P, I don't think we have that much room here for that bounce. So for me, if you take a look here, you know, I am long the spiders. And I'll, I don't think I'm going to be, you know, hanging around much more than 137 to maybe 137.50. I probably won't try and reshort this area. But, you know, I'm long from here. I'll probably sell some around here. And if we start to fade, you know, I would definitely, you know, actually, actually, you know what, I might even put on some shorts there. So the same way you had to, you know, buy the, oops, sorry, the, buy the, you know, the down open, you might have to sell slash short the up open. But just be, bear in mind that we came from 1405 or so. So just don't start too early. So if you start too early, you know, you, you might have to hold some pain. So be aware of the situation. In the sector spotlight, let's talk about some of the leaders because they've really been able to hang in there in the, these six down days. Well, what's important as, as a technician, you look to see relative strength. And when you have a correction, if you embrace it and you see it clearly, you actually see what's acting well. So when the market does turn, you know where to go. And Apple, which was showing relative weakness, you know, a few weeks back, actually the past few days while the market was making lows, showed some relative strength. So Apple, to me, you know, is a candidate to buy. And yesterday, that's where I made the majority of my money intraday. So if you look here at Apple, you go sideways here. I drew this line before. 
This area has been holding. This 555 was not breached, so Apple didn't make a new low. We've been holding this 560. So I would say now, what could breed some confidence if finally you could buy a little higher, if you could buy 574s, I do think you have a cash flow move to retest perhaps 580, 585. So ultimately, if you're an investor, we've had about a 10% pull in off the highs, no big deal. So as a trader, you know, if you're in here, you add there, I think you have the capabilities of getting to about 585 and then you'll have to figure it out from there. How about Amazon? It's down 4% from its peak, which it hit after re reporting a blowout first quarter. Can it get back up to that peak? Well, right now it's holding up very well. You know, I like to watch earnings gaps. Stock had a great uh, report, you mm -hmm. know, better than it has had, and I wasn't even really expecting that. So for me, you know, I'm going to look at it with, you know, objectively now. You know, if you look at it now with Amazon, it's holding the majority of its earnings gap, which is still showing me demand. It's still showing me power. So if you look here as a trader, there you go. You know, here is the earnings gap. This is a level that my guys have been trading against. And it, it hasn't seen, it hasn't filled a portion of this. So if you were trapped and you were a short, you're feeling like, oh my goodness, what do I do next? So the question, just like Apple is, can it break to the upside? So buying versus 220 has worked. The question is, could you buy above 228, 230 for a move back to these highs? And as of right now, I think the composure is more positive than negative. This is a go-to stock for me and my boys. How about Google? That's been acting pretty well this week. Uh, is this going to be one of the ones that pops when the market sentiment turns positive? Google still hasn't performed, I guess, fundamentally with their earnings yet. They've missed yeah. twice, but technically it's been okay if you didn't take it into the earnings. As a macro investor, you haven't been rewarded yet this year, but it's still above the 200-day. A lot of stocks are below it, so granted it didn't have that big move first, but it's still consolidating. I think what's going on with Google is that they're starting to be seen a bit more positively because people look at their valuation and like, oh my goodness, look at their valuation versus the valuation they're giving to Facebook, where Google is <laughs> more mature, they're more established, they have five businesses, and if you look here technically, chart looks all right. You know, it's, it's starting to prove that it could be held again. So here is the last time it came out with earnings, hit the 200-day, bounced off, went all the way back to the highs. Here's where they came out with earnings again, which the street didn't really love. They didn't love, the, they didn't actually, I don't think, understand the split up of the stock and whatnot. Anyway, came back down, tested the 200-day, and now it's nice and tight here. You know how I love nice and tight patterns. I tried trading it yesterday for a breakout above this 615, 617 level. Maybe the market wasn't ready. Today, it breaks above this. The next level here comes in. What's this level here? This level probably is about... Uh, 630. So for guys looking for cash flow, it gets above 615. I think you have a pretty clean move to about 630. And as an investor, as long as it stays above the 200-day moving average, I think you're okay. How about American Express? It's, this is a high-quality non-bank financial name. They're leveraged to the high-end consumer who's been doing well. They've been spending. And they also have the best-in-class uh, credit metrics. Stephanie Link owns this one. She thinks the price target can get to 65. Well, right now, technically, during this correction, it acted much better than its peers. It, it pulled back, but it, it's retesting an area. If you look at the chart here on American Express, you'll see stock, in my opinion, is looking much better. Okay, if you want to talk about entries and exits, this was a nice spot to enter once it broke above this mini descending trend line here, which is around 58. You had a nice breakout move during this correction. It just came back and retested. So hopefully, maybe you bought some back on this dip. But overall, I think this stock is in the gain or in the game for higher prices. As a trade, it doesn't look like it's so juicy, but I guess if it starts breaking above this price point, you are gonna see the 60s, so there is some money there for traders that wanna hold it. Uh, you know, the home builders have done really well all year, and yesterday both Toll Brothers and Lennar were up over 3%. I mean, these guys came into the spring selling season saying that orders were really good, and you know, it, it must be, um, you know, home builders, home, houses, houses are being sold. Affordability is great. Well, there, there you go. The, the correction in home prices are done. Well, I do think it's getting better. And the, this group gave us indications earlier in the year that there's going to be strength there, that they're going to provide leadership. Early in the year, we thought maybe it's an oversold bounce. We've talked about it being much more than that. You know, I actually went out and I bought a house, so I think it's cheap. I'm actually able to sell my condo. So there is some activity there. So if you take some of your experience into the market and then look at stock prices, that's how you can make some decisions. And yesterday, with the strength in Lennar and Toll, I said, you know what, maybe we do get that oversold bounce. So it gave me some conviction to come in net long today. And if you look at Lennar, you will see, you know, look at the chart here. This chart looks actually a little bit like American Express, where you, know, you had your last breakout move 
from this descending channel. It's above the moving averages, and now it looks like it wants to make new highs in the year already. So if you're a stock picker near Lennar, you're getting rewarded. Look at Toll Brothers also. Toll Brothers, I don't know why we have a double print here, but really right back at the highs, showing you strength, showing you that this group still is providing leadership. And if you're an investor, you're doing quite well and you haven't had to worry too much about this pullback or correction in, in the markets. One more name I want to touch on is LinkedIn. Is this another uh, Facebook IPO play? They're getting, they're benefiting from that. I think it's more than that. I think that in the beginning it was seen as the ugly stepsister to Facebook, that it doesn't have the reach, it doesn't have the members. But P.S. I think management's doing a good job putting their business in place, more of like almost a a, a, a resource type company, a, a Monster.com or even a. Um, a career builder. So they have a, a big mix here that they're trying to manage as far as advertising, as far as HR. And if you look at the chart, to me, technically, it's been acting well. I know it was sold on the earnings, but that was also a weak period in the market. You know, you had a huge move from all the way down here in 55. So sometimes they use earnings to sell, and that was a bit of an exhaustion gap. What I like is that it actually held this uptrend. So it still technically looks good. You know, it held above you know, this 108 or area recently after this tail end. And now I think at some point it's going to make new highs. If you look at the weekly chart, you will see that it's a new issue, you know, and some, some of the biggest gainers come from new issues that are public within a few years. So next time it tries to get above this 120 to 122, you could see a move to well north of 140, 150. And I think that could happen this year. Well, those are the stocks that are showing relative strength and that we should be watching today. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about the banks. Yesterday, they, they've been kind of weak, so we'll get into sp stock specifics there. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, getting into the banks, let's kick it right off with JP Morgan. Scott, you and I have talked about this multiple times. It's a best in breed bank, and it should do well as the economy improves. But you know what? It closed below its 200 day, I believe, yesterday, and, uh, or it's getting close to its 200 day. So, what are you doing with it? I know you own this one. I did buy it back yesterday um, a after a six point pull in from the highs into big support. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. So, for me, looking for an oversold bounce, what I talk about is going to the leader of every group. No need to be in the laggard. And if you look at the chart of JP Morgan, you will see, you know, this is the, the lines that I drew yesterday. Remember that? Here's actually the 200 day, so it's still above it. And, you know, this is where it broke out from way back when on, um, you know, what was that, March 13th? So it's revisiting this area. So that's an area that tries to hold. So I'm long some. I do think even if we just get an oversold bounce, there's no reason why it can't get back up to just say 4170. So that's like a dollar for, for traders. But overall, if you sold into some of the strength or you sold before earnings as an investor, if you buy back here, you might even be able to get a good swing trade that could go to new highs at some point this year. So JP Morgan, I would say is best in breed. And if you want to go with one of the banks, you go with this one. What about Morgan Stanley? Morgan Stanley's been a laggard, and I think Bovey came out yesterday, finally, and actually said that he thinks it's the most undervalued stock or something like that. I don't want to quote him. Typically, he actually like touts them after a move, so it's good to see him actually support one of them into a correction. For me, Morgan Stanley, I guess if you wanted to be um, in, in one of these investment banks you know, for a dip, and I know that they've been doing a lot of underwriting lately, into this 15, I think, um, is, is a little bit safer than, than buying strength. It seems like anytime you try and buy strength in um, Morgan Stanley, <laughs> you get punched or pummeled or, or, or not, you don't feel too, too good there. So I would say now with Morgan Stanley, if, you know, if it gets back above, just say this $16 area, you know, for a bounce type trade, it does have some room back to 17, but overall it's below all the moving averages. There's, such, there's so much resistance here. I would avoid it as an investment, maybe as a trade, you have a little bit, you know, a few points there. And if you want to trade, I think it's even better to just trade Goldman Sachs because the ranges are bigger. Why don't we take a look at Goldman Sachs? That's down 16% or something since its March high. Yeah, this stock has been a disappointment. And I don't even, these guys are timing lately. Like I think they came out again and supported their, their coal and gold. I think they came out at the top of the market and said it's the best opportunity for this market now. So their timing to me, I, I, someone should check their inventory. But anyway, as far as trading it too, it's been a disappointment. Every time it looks good, it fails. 
And last time I tried to get involved, just to show you um, price points, I remember on the day which gave me some clues that we were going to fail from the market standpoint, I was talking 115.50. So I was in it in this little flag type pattern. I added here and then it failed intraday, got out of it. And that's why you have stops because look, look what happened next. And if you look here, like Morgan, it's below all these moving averages. So this is telling you how weak it is. Yes, it's coming into some bigger support. So you can see some type of oversold bounce. But I think if you are playing it for an oversold bounce, the max you're going to get, you know, could be back to this uh, 111, 113 area, and then I think it's a better short so that you'll have a high, lower high, lower high, another lower high. This stock has just been very disappointing this entire year. Now Bank of America, this stock traded up to $10 after it passed the, bank, the stress test, but now it's at $7.60. Has this one bottomed? It looks like it's at support, and I was talking to guys that actually sold the strength, like I buy Bank of America below eight. Mm -hmm. I said, most likely, if you want to buy it for the longer term, if you, you, know, you believe in America, I, well, I hate to say it actually that way. Anyway, you know, <laughs> if you want the right price instead of chasing a 10, I think buying down here is a little bit better. If you look at the chart, I'll, you know, you'll see exactly why. Um, you know, last time we talked about this trade was when everyone was excited with the market. This was the prior breakout. Shows you have to time these things. Remember, we were talking 815, went all the way to 10. Then if you look here, this is where it failed. This is where it tried to consolidate for a new, a new move, but the new move was to the downside. But look where it also came from. So coming right back into this support area, you know, I do think it's okay. I don't think you get a blockbuster move, but you're seeing some type of, you know, descending type of channel. Here's on the macro, here's on the micro. So I would say above 790, if this market does try and muster an oversold bounce, perhaps you know, percentage-wise, it's decent. You can see it move back to 820, 840 before it has much more to prove. And then finally, Visa, that one had been strong all year, but kind of took a dip after reporting earnings. But it seemed to stabilize in the last few days or so. What are the key levels you're looking at here? Visa and MasterCard have been the go-to stocks. They've been making new highs every three months. These stocks make a new high. This time around, Visa, I think the report was pretty solid in my opinion, but they sold it just like they did with a lot of other reports. So if you look here at Visa, you will see it's at a crucial area, guys. You know, if you look at this wide range bar, this bar right here just engulfed this entire range. So if you are in Visa and you're not committed, I would say this thing breaks below 115. You better get out of the way. But anytime you've gotten out of Visa, you know, um, a few months later, it, it, it goes higher. So as a trader, I think people will be looking as a short Below this area, this price point here is like 115.40. So below this, you know, you can see downside. But if you know it wants to hold that support and, and do what Visa Mastercard's been doing above this mini box formation, this is right here by 119.08. You could see it move back up, and if that's the case, it'll negate the strength of this potent wide range bar. And then you know, just trade it long versus this area. So be long versus 115. It breaks 115, 115.40. You can see it move to test this gap, which is right around 112. And then look how far down the next level is, which comes in right around 103. So write down those three levels if you're trading Visa. Let's go into some quick hits. We'll kick it off with Devon Energy. This stock is down 11% since the beginning of May. That's on oil prices, the decline in oil prices. This company is transitioning to, to do more, more oil, but 60% of their production comes from natural gas, which is up 9% in the last week. Stephanie Link was buying this yesterday. She just thinks that the pullback is unwarranted and more bad news is, is priced in than it's deserved. Okay, well, right now it's on support. If you take a quick look at the chart, because it's a quick hit, here you go. If you wanted to buy on support, there you go, right into 62. For a trade, if it starts getting above 64.59, next move could be into the moving averages around 67. So there's a few bucks here if it gets above this mini pivot, which is, um, what did I just say, is uh, 64.81 to maybe around 67. Um, how about eBay? Stephanie bought this yesterday. It's been on her wish list. Uh, she likes the secular growth in the internet, and it's trading at 13 times versus the group at 30 times. Well, this stock, we probably could have put it in the sector spotlight because it's one of the stocks acting well after earnings. If you look at the chart here, I love it when they hold the earnings gap. It shows you power, and right here, it shows you that it's holding the earnings gap. The low here is around 39, so it's holding 39, and now it looks like it's in the game to break above it. So if the market's going to let anything make new highs, eBay's in the game, so I think it's good for an investment. And if it starts getting above this 41 as a trade, it might show you, you know, some cash flow as well. What about Priceline? They reported earnings last night, but guidance was light. What do you do? I was telling people to sell it into earnings or, or, or just avoid it because I know this stock gets me. It's down 40 bucks. I wouldn't even touch it unless you're a really, you know, expert trader that, that could take the whipsaws. But I think at this particular point, you know, I'm going to avoid. You want to take a quick look at the chart really, really quick. 
you know, um, I think it was down like 40 points. So I'm not exactly sure where. So, you know, if you want to just go over levels, here's 650. Here's a gap that it might try and protect. And then here's all the moving averages. So I would say into this area is where if you are short this stock, you know, you cover some. And if you're looking to buy it, I would actually wait. How about Microsoft? <laughs> Microsoft showed a little relative strength yesterday. It's, it's pulled back from you know, the, the target area. I think we put a target area on Microsoft from 32 to 36 this year. It got there early, pulled back. You look here at Microsoft. Um, yesterday, you want to see a stock go green. It's, it went green while the market didn't. It's actually holding higher. It's not near the 200 day. So this line right here is 100 day. So you know, it's above that, showing some relative strength. I don't think it's going to be a barn burning type move. But you know, if you bought it here for a swing trade, I think it looks good. If you want to play for a continuation above 3083, you know, your next real level here is right around 32. And finally, Walmart, it's been holding up well. You think this is a stock that would do well if we are in a tougher economic environment? Well, Walmart, ever, ever since the story um, and the allegations, yeah. it's been under pressure. So if you look here now, um, I would say that it's okay. It's above the 200 day. You have somewhat of a tight pattern. I think investors still stay the course, still stay along as a trade. It could be choppy, but if it gets above this um, 59.36, you could see a retest of the gap from that news, but then it's going to take a lot of volume to get into that gap and repair the chart. So for right now, if you're long Walmart, I say, you know, use 57 as your pivot. If you're looking for cash flow, see if you can get above this. But I do think that the, the gap right there is going to be some trouble. So trading today, uh, you just kind of need to be cautious going into the day and know what's going on in the market since we may or may not get the oversold bounce. Well, I think the oversold bounce is in the process. So the question is, where does it go? Mm -hmm. So you map out two big resistance areas. So for me, I'm going to say, what's the easy bounce? What am I looking for for cash flow? Where should I get out? And then where should I look where the bears might come in and defend where you could put back shorts? So if you cover it into 1345, I think maybe if we can get up to 1375, 1380, that's where I would look to see if the bears defend and that's where you're reshort. If you're long into today and we hold up and you buy it, I think spiders, 137, 137, 30, that's where I'm going to look to get out. And on Apple, I'm going to watch to see if you can get above 574 and see what it does if you can get to 582, 585. That's the easy part of the bounce. And then see maybe if you can get a cute short there. So know the ranges, know your resistance, know what you're looking to get out of it. And obviously watch the headlines because they've been you know, gyrating the market a lot intraday. So now you know the key levels to watch for. Be sure to check in at the end of the day for the Daily Recap with Scott and T3 Live.